You know that we are, we have been given an invitation, an open door invitation by Almighty God. His name is Jesus. Uh, here at the Outlaw World Mission, Missionary Church to pray and receive miracles, to pray and to receive divine interventions, to pray and to receive supernatural moves of God. Uh, and, and God Almighty has given this to the Outlaw congregation, both the online congregation, whether you're in Sydney, Australia, or whether you are in San Bernardino, California, like Brother Jesse Munez, or whether you're down in, in Florida, like Sister Blessed Esquivez. Um, the, 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 the entire congregation of people online or in the pew, God has opened up the door for us to pray and to receive uh, answered prayer in the form of miracles, divine intervention, supernatural occurrences, because that the congregation of people, whether you just joined a month ago or a year ago, or whether you're with me 14 years ago, you've stood with me in the midst of a very dark time when darkness descended on the world, but particularly in America with the advent of Barack Hussein Obama and then darker with, who was the son of Satan and then darker with tribulation Trump, the servant of Satan. And uh, the people stood with me in the midst of all of this. And the Lord is saying now, ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. And we gave the example early on that uh, uh, for men to ask for, like Solomon in 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 5, Solomon asked for the heart of David, uh, who God loved greatly, and, great, and, 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 and David loved God greatly. They loved each other. And I told men that, you know, that just, you know, I know you may need a home, you may want to start your own business, you may need a few million dollars, you know, to do what you need to do. But first I asked God to give you the heart of David. And that worked well. It's going to work. It's going to work real, real good for men. And then the Lord moved me over to now, as he told me uh, in the prayer closet, and he told me, and, and now to tell women to ask for the heart of Ruth. Because without Ruth, there'd be no David. Ruth is the grandmother of David and the great-grandmother of Solomon. So really, Ruth, Ruth, and God used her, and Ruth was not a Jew. You know, she was not of the Jewish line that declared uh, by Jacob and Israel. She was a Moabite. She was a woman of incestuous birth. So she was really a dirty woman in one regard. She, she was born of, of, of which is one of the Moabites that had Moses wrote in the law that, a, that an incestuous birth person would not be, uh, uh, would not be allowed in, inside of the along with a bastard, would not be allowed inside of the temple for 10 generations, something like, you know, 350, 400 years. Ruth was born in a dirt, uh, among a dirty people that got started with Lot's older daughter having sex with him when she was a virgin after God rained down fire on Solomon and Gomorrah, and they lived in a cave for a long time out there in the, in the wilderness, and then they start, Lot, start, Lot started having sex with his daughters. And his older daughter bare a son, and they named him Moab. Well, Ruth was a descendant of Moab. She was born of an incestual nation, but yet without Ruth, who was a Moabitess. We don't get David, my brother, my sister. We don't get Solomon. So the Lord has said to me to tell the women to ask for the heart of Ruth. Now, we've gone through the fact that a large number of women are suffering to this very day, whether they're married, unmarried, wealthy, poor, indifferent. A large number of women are going through uh, struggle time because of early sexual encounters and mainly in sexual sexual encounters. You know, quiet as is kept, quiet as is kept, you know, I just gave great respect to my stepfather, Willie Martin Patterson, who had two stepdaughters but never went down that road. But there are many men who write, go right into the bedroom with their own daughters. And these daughters are now mothers and grandmothers and great-grandmothers trying to deal with all of that has been a mess. But Ruth cleared it up. And the Lord wanted me to make that announcement today. 
I said, Lord, the Lord, his name is Jesus. Want me to make them, that roof has cleared all that up. Now it's a time for a cleansing of women, God said, to use that title. The cleansing of women, because Ruth has cleared up all the curses that have happened as a result of in sexual relationship. Not only when your stepfather moves in, marries a woman, she's got children already, and he takes the he takes the wife of the uh, the the, uh, the, the the he takes the daughter of the of the woman he's having sexual with, sexual relationship with, and so it, 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 that. That it's women that it need to be sexually cleansed, and that's what the Lord said. And in order that you might, because you can pray, and God can give you a million dollars, you still ain't happy. God can give you a husband, you can't happy. You ain't gonna find your Boaz, even if you found Boaz, if you haven't been cleansed from early sexual practices. It's gonna make everything gonna make life very very difficult. So it's gonna take me a couple of teachings because I'm gonna have to wrap this up shortly. It's gonna take me a couple of teachings to get through this. I ain't going nowhere. You don't you go nowhere. But Ruth was an incestual birth, born of an incestual daughters of Lot, and um, the her older son, uh, she was a virgin. Uh, well, the, well, her, Lot's older daughter was a virgin. And uh, the thing of it was is that Lot had offered his daughters to the Sodomites there in Sodom. That's another story. We'll get to that. But the cleansing needs to happen with women. Of your first and your early youth uh, sexual experiences, if they were bad, and, uh, and especially in, in sexual, sexual relationship. And so... The what we want to do as I talk and what I'm doing now, this teaching is while it all at the same time is a prayer for cleansing. You may be 70 years old now, you know, and maybe your father had sex with you. I don't know. I'm not. Let me say, you know, I start this by saying I'm not asking anybody. I don't know anything about it. But I don't know nothing about y'all. I don't know nothing about y'all. I don't need to take somebody or another. You're going to get on the fence and let the devil whisper in your ear that somehow or another somebody told you something about me, told me something about you, and I'm after you. I'm not, I'm not trying to help you. I don't know nothing about you. Don't want to know nothing about you. By the way, you know, I'm pretty, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I'm careful of dogs that bring bones. That's an old North Carolina saying. They sit down in North Carolina, the dog that bring a bone will carry a bone. In other words, what they say in North Carolina, be careful when people come tell you something about somebody else. Oh, I want to tell you something. Got a prayer. I want to tell you something, Pastor Manny. The Lord, the, the, the North Carolina, not the Lord, but North Carolina, they say, be careful when, because that's a dog bringing a bone. But that same dog that brings you a bone, will carry a bone about you, somebody else. So I'm, I'm very careful about that, what I let people say to me. I know I am. I'm very careful. And if I'm talking, even in the counseling session, I see people going down the wrong road. I, ch- I stop it. There's a dog that bring a, let me tell you something. <laughs> North Carolina. I said, Pastor, man, is there anything about North Carolina? Yeah! <laughs> I'm going down to North Carolina to come. It, um, Probably June or July, and gonna take some pictures of everything, try to put together some pictorials about my early childhood. But I don't know nothing about you now. I don't. I don't know. Ain't nobody told me nothing about you. But the Lord knows about you. And we need some prayer. We need a prayer for cleansing. You see, before you can find your Boaz, before you can, and you see, you might, you might even be married now. You might have a husband, you might be a widow, or you might be, uh, you might be getting ready to get married. But you need, you need a prayer for cleansing. Now, and, and a prayer for restoration. So Ruth, who was a Moabitess, uh, and was born of an incestuous relationship, if that's an appropriate word. But God cleaned her. God, and I'm going to show you the cleansing, not today, we got, don't have time, but God clean. Ruth becomes one of the most powerful women. She's almost as powerful as Mary the Virgin because Jesus is called the son of David. Yeah, he is. No, Jesus is called the son of David. Then that makes Ruth J- Jesus' grandmama. And no, she is a grandmama 
of the great, 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 great grandmama of Ruth born of an incestual relationship. No, uh uh-uh. So uh, what we want to do now, and now this is not for every woman, that everyone don't need a, a prayer for cleansing, but you know that, that the Lord says we'll, we'll get you cleaned up. And then you, we need to, there needs to be a restoration. Uh, now, you're not going to go back and undo what happened. You know, you're not going to go back and, 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 and uh, the root, uh, Lot's daughter ain't going to go back and undo what happened at, in that cave out there with Lot. But, and, but you can be restored. God says that you can be restored whereby you can then become a mighty, mighty power like Ruth is. Because without Ruth, my brother, we don't get David. So we're going to do a prayer of cleansing, the prayer of restoration, and the blessing of the children. And, you know, there needs to be also a healing of the mind. A lot of times women behave a certain way, not realize they go way back to their sexual relations, you know. And, uh, I, I, you know, my sister went down some wrong paths uh, later on in her life as she got older. And I'll say this, and, I've, you know, I've honored her and I've honored my stepfather, but you know that boy, Bobby Green, I said I wanted to kill him because he made my sister pregnant. He dogged her. He dogged her. He dogged her. She was 14, 15 years old. He dogged her. She had to quit school, gave birth to a child. He dogged her. And uh, somebody should have killed him. And, you know, uh, I, something when something like that happened, she gave birth and he, he didn't marry her and, you know, didn't take care of her. She had to quit school, get a job, take care of the baby. Something like that. And I'm sure it scarred my sister for life. And probably she never trusted another man at all. Her life. She probably never, she, though she got married, she finally did get married to some man. But she probably never trusted another man and she could never be intimate. Truly, 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 because of what that dog Bobby Green did to her. Somebody should have killed him. I should have killed him. Yeah, I said, I'm preaching. I should have killed him. Um, and then, you know, she probably, well, just, and then later on in her life, she took a turn and went down the wrong road sexually. I'll just leave it like that, you know? Because if you, and like that happened to a lot of women, you know, if you, if you lose faith in men, you know, and you can't be comfortable or feel safe with a man, you know, you know, we need a, we need a cleansing. God says, God, God says, that there need to be a cleansing. There need to be a restoration. Once you're cleansed, you need to be restored. Now you can get your Boaz. Well, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. But I can tell you this, Ruth, who was born of an incestual relationship, is not a grandmama of Jesus. It shows you that God can clean you. God can heal you. God, God, it, and he wants me to say to the women of the church, men ask to be like David, and don't forget, brothers, to be integrity of heart. You can't begin to imagine what would happen if you stop, if you start telling yourself the truth, the, tr- the whole truth, and stop blaming everybody else. Brother, you're going to soar like it. You're going to say, well, ain't no matter. <laughs> I ain't going to get, you know, I used to tell the story that uh, when I, uh, First left off kind of out of my younger brothers. I had three of them. They were all smaller than me, uh, younger than me. I used to beat them all up. I used to beat them up. That's what I did. I'm the older brother. I used to beat the living daylights out of them, all three of them. So I came to New York. I stayed in New York for a little while. And two or three years, I came back. My brother, one was six foot six. The other was six foot four. The other was six foot five. And and so they said, hey, you want to fight us the way you used to do? (laughs) I say, no, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> you know, uh, there, there's a time when, you, you know, you have to stop giving everybody else the credit for what's wrong with your life. You got to take another, you got to, you know, you got to stand up and stop blaming other people for your problems. Integrity of heart. Integrity of heart. And just take the bitter fruit of what takes place. All right, daughters, uh, well, I'm not through with y'all. I'm not through with y'all, but go ahead now and and let's pray the prayer. Lord Jesus, Ruth is such a beautiful person without her. And we pray that today we can can cleanse the spirits of women who go back 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years 
of the uh, uh, of sexual uncleanness in many, many ways. And then some women who may think that they were sexually unclean, I believe in the teachings coming forward that uh, they will realize that they are, they are not unclean. We have to look at where Moses said that sex was permissible and, and how to go far from there. So Lord, thank you that uh, we're able to get together today. But we're going to see miracles. We're going to see divine interventions and supernatural occurrences. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you, grandson David and great-grandson Solomon. This is symbolic. It's where Jesus was baptized. It's where John baptized. And so this is not a rebaptism. It's just a symbolic, if you will, act of what we're going to do, being in the water at the place where Jesus was baptized. And what I'd like to do is to baptize today that we would come to terms with the understanding of what God is calling for in righteousness. The, uh, he's not calling for prosperity. He, he isn't calling for culturalism. God is calling for righteousness. If we would commit ourselves to fulfill all righteousness and God has called us to be persecuted for righteousness sake as John was persecuted for righteousness and so Jesus. I got to tell you that I'll never forget this experience of actually um, stepping into water where Jesus and were baptized, where John has baptized so many people. This is such a historic and a powerful, powerful sight. Just to touch the water uh, was so critical. And I'm glad that people got baptized to have that experience. Uh, it was a safe experience and a great experience. I'm not even going to change my clothes. I want to just stay in baptism mode until I get back to the hotel. So that's what I want to say. All right. This has been live from the Jordan River. <laughs> God bless you all. Peace. <laughs> Righteousness. Boom, chuckalaka goes right there. Over the years, we have served more than one million meals to hungry bellies and hungry people here in the Harlem community. And I wanted you to be able to see that. I want you to see our involvement with youth, our summer youth programs, the uh, our courtyard being used as a, um, a place where children can be safe, guarded, and protected as they have their miniature swimming pools, um, and a safe place for children to eat that is guarded, that is protecting, protected by our own sense of security and the wholesome and fresh meals that, um, that we serve. We, we wanted you to be able to see the mission of this church. And we've been doing this for years. Just recently, one of our members, more than a 30 year member of this church, but it hasn't, not one that, you know, that you would probably find as members of some other churches with their nose stuck up in the air. But her father is now close to death or very sick in the state of South Carolina. And uh, well, I said to her, well, I said, well, because she doesn't have money, I said, we will buy you a bus ticket, a round trip bus or train ticket for you to travel to South Carolina to, to be with your father in this time of pandemic. There's very little funding around. There's, there's sickness everywhere. And and she, the thing that just blew me away was she said as she was talking to Elizabeth, she said, but how are you going to do that, to pay for me a round-trip ticket to, to travel and give me expense money? And because you, you got to, Pastor Manning has to feed the children. He has to take, he has to educate the children. He has to buy school supplies for them. He has to pick them up in the mornings and take them back. And then he's got the ministry he has to take care of, all the bills of running the church, of keeping a major house like our house operational, keep the lights on, keep the, how are you going to be able to do that? And she was almost reluctant to take the money because she felt that it would be better served by feeding the children. We gave it to her anyway. But I, we want you to know that we do a work in this community. There have been a lot of lies told on us. And it's almost unimaginable why some of the people that have lied on us. But I can tell you behind all of it is the LGBTQ community. Hallelujah. 
They don't want us to be successful, but we are, and we're going to continue to be successful in serving the meals that we're serving and serving the people that we are. And the LGBTQ community will not take us down. They are not going to take our church, yet they have defamed us. They've written ugly newspaper articles about us. They've marched against us. They've done a whole lot of ugly things. But you see what we have done, and that's not even the half of our service to children and to the needy in terms of our homeless shelters and the things that we've done over the years, and we will continue. And probably the lies and the smears and the ugly newspaper articles and the wicked spirits and the so-called I ain't for the black man, that is not going to go away. I don't expect it to go away. I don't. But I do tell you this, that we will succeed against all of that, for God is with us, and I am his servant.